Okay, very good. So, J, as I mentioned before, is looping over the PT of the actual hydrons that come out. K is an index. K is an index that is looping over the PT had bin. Oh, this is the solution to step three, sorry. Uh, here we are, okay? So where is my pointer? Here we are. So J is looping over the PTs. K is looping over the, the PT had bins. And the idea is to calculate the error. And the error is simply the count, which is over here, multiplied by the hard cross section. Okay. And of course, since uh, our yield uh, had to be um, uh, binned in PT, so that is 2 pi. This is the delta PT, and then this is the PT. This, this, or this is the delta PT, and this is the actual PT bin. And this is your d eta. Okay, so the same as it was written over here 2 pi pt dpt d eta. There you have 2 pi pt dpt d eta. Okay, and uh, for the, 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 the other thing is we need to calculate. So this essentially is just giving us this product, which is this AB product. Yeah, the only thing that we're missing basically is that we're missing the uncertainty and that I already, I already mentioned the, the uncertainty associated with this is just the inverse of the count. There is the inverse of the count. Okay, and plus the uncertainty associated with the cross section. And this is the uncertainty associated with the cross section, which was read up here in file two. Okay. So this essentially does this for um, all of the hard guides. Otherwise it sets it to zero, but this, this step is essentially, uh, uh, is just uh, uh, reinforcing that this is zero, but it was already initialized in zero. So this just prevents any mistake, okay? Now, the only thing that, that is happening down below here is that I'm repeating this uh, uh, calculation again, but this time using the, the um, the recoil guys, if the code had recoil, which we don't have to worry about, okay? So this, this entire section here, don't have to worry about because we don't have recoil, but in general, when I'm gonna give you out the code, if there is recoil, you can take that into account as well, okay? So that is essentially sort of solves the, uh, this, this second segment. And then the last uh, bit of information is simply, now that we have, the, that we know what the uncertainty is for, uh, for every PT had been and any, and any um, uh, PT bin, okay? We can just quickly calculate again uh, the, by, by multiplying these two numbers. So the only thing that we would need is basically this, this numerator over here. We need to multiply these two numbers again Okay, to calculate and, and some just simply over sum over k. That's the only thing that you have to do to calculate the average. Okay, now the, the if you want to calculate the standard deviation for that, okay, then uh, you need to just assume that every single PT had been the uncertainty associated with that is independent. So, the, the using Gaussian error propagation, where you have uh, uh, independent uncertainties, you just need to add indiv individual uncertainties in quadrature. So Uncertainty for k1 squared plus k2 squared plus k3 squared plus k4 squared, square root of the entire thing, and that gives you the uncertainty on, on this guy. And that's it. At this point, we just have to sum over all of the k's and sum over all of the uh, um, uncertainties, provided that you add them in quadrature, and then you take the square root at the end. Okay, so that's, that's the last step. And all of this you need to sort of uh, calculate, uh, once you've calculated the standard deviation and the mean value, you need to store that into total cross-section. So there's gonna be two total cross-section variables. Okay, one that contains the error. And actually, let me just quickly, I can, I can stop sharing this slide and I can uh, show you on the do in the in the docker container
Okay. Okay, so we have the cross section. This is, so do we, in the code, now we can go ahead and read the rest. In the code, we have uh, two extra variables. This is a temporary variable if you want to use them. This is just for convenience. So if you have uh, hard induced cross section or soft induced cross section, this is only for the case where you have um, the recoil partons, but we don't have to worry about it in this case. So you just have to, so this is a temporary variable that you can fill or not. If you want to, if, you, if that, that, that's clearer for you when you do the calculation, you can go and fill it. Otherwise, the only two real variables that you need to fill are these two. Okay, so the, the, this guy is just summing, once you've multiplied the, uh, the, the spectrum, this is a DDN over PTDPT data. Right, so you multiply the NDPT the data by the cross section, and you just sum over all of the uh, all of the k indices here, and that will give you the total cross section. And for the total cross section error, you don't just sum over the k's; you need to add add the, the uncertainties in quadrature. And that's the last step. Okay, so once you've uh, added it, uh, add, uh, calculated what the total cross section is and the uncertainty on the cross section, then basically at the end here, we will take the, the ah, actually, I even, I even simplify that. Okay, very good. Um, you don't even actually need to take the square root when you're, when you're summing over the, the, the case. You can just add the, the uncertainties in quadrature. That is it, because there is an extra square root step here at the very end before we actually print out the total cross section as well as the, as the uncertainty on the cross section. Okay. So this is the, the last step. And uh, so you said five minutes before Yasuki's talk is when we should stop. Maybe a few minutes before. Uh, okay, okay, that's fine. So yeah, so the, the, so the very last step is, as I said, to simply uh, calculate the total cross section by multiplying the um, by multiplying the 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 the, the cross section uh, variable, the one in the in this file two, which is called cross section. You multiply that by the bin, by the uh, the number, the, the bin variables. So that is this guy here. And then you just sum over K. And the errors you just, you know, propagate them through by, by, by squaring them. Okay, so I will uh, go over onto the Slack channel and I will answer any, any questions that people may have. I will answer these questions here.
Yeah, I'm noticing a lot of these comments on um, on Slack, and I um, and many of them often have the same resolution, which is that uh, people forget to to comment something out on the. Yes, yes, yes. I, will, I, will, I already posted a a sort of commented out version of the um, the XML file, so I will just post that immediately. It's, it's I know. I mean, I, I was just making a general comment. I mean, this is, I mean, let me just say that this is even as somebody who uses just give all the time, I make the same mistake. <laughs> so you shouldn't feel bad, bad about that at all. Um, and just, it was a good idea to sort of go over your user XML file uh, before you start, just to, just, just to go over, you know, what are the things that are on, you know, what, what are the, and just think about what each of those things are, are going to be doing. Right, and that this is basically why I wanted uh, to uh, to pe for people to manually edit their XML files, and that's what I did at the beginning of my session, where I literally went in there manually edited things, so people are aware where where these things exist, as opposed to uh, relying necessarily on uh, a script that sort of or, or, or is already pre prepackaged and pre-does that for you. So this was sort of the, as a reminder that what, that people should have in the back of their head what all of these switches mean as they're working through it, and um, yes, so constantly, constantly looking at your your user XML as you were suggesting a budget is very good. You should always always cross check with that everything is okay before before you start running. Okay, so let me just uh, quickly find the correct. XML to upload, and then I will share it on the Slack. Posted the, the 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 XML file. Okay. So how are people doing in terms of uh, step three? Have you completed it yet? Yes or no? Start that poll now. People are voting. While they're voting, voting, I will Yeah, Goiko, I think there's a comment for you on the instructor channel. Um, Yes, just give me one sec, I will answer this question. We are at five yeses and six noes. This is your last assignment, right? Yeah, this is the last point, yes. Yeah, okay, so that, <laughs> it's probably good that you're now, you know, you're beginning to lose the, uh, the crowd now. Yeah, that's, 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 it's, it's, I mean, if everybody was was doing this um, uh, 
perfectly, that would be great. But um, I mean, as I said, I will be posting all of the solutions uh, to, to these different uh, sections online. And people can, uh, I'm not sure whether even people, uh, you know, how many people were, were, well, actually quite a few people have managed to finish the, um, the, the running of the four PT hat bins. So, um, yeah, the, the, the solutions will be all up online. I will, I will, I can actually show them uh, as well. I will be showing them in, in, in a few seconds here. Let me just answer one. Uh, So far, holding steady at five yeses and seven noes. But I would uh, say that those who are answering yes are not people who are, you know, have seem to have prior experience with Jetscape. So these are okay. uh, definitely students who are learning this for the first time and being able to do it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Seven, seven, seven yes, seven no. Okay. Okay, Goikov, we're like three minutes out. Okay, at this point, I will just show the solutions. So let me uh, stop sharing this. Okay, and start sharing this screen. So where is my Zoom? Okay. So that, that, this is sort of the, the answer. So uh, I, I'm actually using here this temporary variable. Um, but as I said, you don't have to, you could, you could directly use the total cross section. And then you just simply, what you do is you simply multiply the number of uh, um, the, the bin counter times the hard cross section, okay? That's what you do and um, you are summing that later on, where is it? Right here. So forget about the soft induced. Those, those as I said, we don't, we, we, we're not gonna worry about those for the moment. And then you just simply sum over them in the total cross section, okay? That, so this is for the, uh, the, the, the mean, and then from the standard deviation, you just add the, the, um, the, the, the quantity we just calculated before, uh, the error in, in quadrature, okay? And at the end, as I said, we, you, you just simply have to divide out by, um, um, you need to take the square root of this number, basically, because the, 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 to, get to, the, to get to the, to go from the variance to the standard deviation, okay? And this sort of is the, the last step, okay? So, just a, quickly, a quick way to go beyond this. What you basically need to do at this point, uh, once you're done with this, is to uh, increase your statistics. And, uh, and if you wanna really compare to experimental data, you need to extend uh, your PT hat bins. Okay, so, if, so here's sort of like a proposal of how to do this in such a way that you really capture the, the, the falling of the spectrum. 
you sort of need to have uh, fewer, uh, uh, you need to have um, PT headbands that are smaller uh, and the lower, um, prov provided that you're, you're not uh, sampling millions and millions of events per, per one PT headband, right? If you, if you want to reduce that and still get a good spectrum, the idea is that you want to break out uh, the, the, the entire PT, the, the, the entire range of uh, your collision in several intervals. So in 5TV, your maximum PT hat is half of that, 2.5. So the idea is that uh, you have PT hat bins ranging from as low as a, a, a few GV all the way up to 2.5 TV. And these are sort of the bin widths that, are, that, that roughly that you would need uh, to be able to, to sample the, the entire spectrum correctly. So you would need to use something like one or two GV bins if your if your PT hat is is below 20, that's the bin width. This is the the range. So from zero to 20, you're in here. We did today from 200 to, um, to from 100 to 200. There, in principle, you would you would we did bins of 25. In principle, you would more do like bins of 10 if you were doing a real simulation. And then as you go, um, oh sorry, bins of 10 up until 100. Yes. And we were doing today bins of 25 between 100 and 200, but you can do an anywhere between uh, 10 and 50, provided that you put enough um, samples per PT headband. And enough samples typically ranges on the order of uh, tens of thousands to, uh, to 100,000. At the end of the day, basically, if you, when you sample all of the possible PT headbands from, from uh, let's say 10 GV all the way up to uh, 500 or, or even a TV, depending on, uh, what observable that you want to look into, um, you would you need a few million events in total, okay? So you need to multiply the number of PT headbands times the number of um, uh, events per PT headband, uh, and that total number needs to be on the order of a few million if you want to uh, get a spectrum that's really uh, cross section, basically that really uh, extends the entire dynamical range that that is accessible in the experiment, okay? So this is all that I wanted to show today. And at this point, um, I will stop sharing. And uh, yeah, I will post the, the, all the solutions to all of the exercises online and I'm uh, handed it over to Yasuki to take it from here.